Hello! The topic of our discussion today is scaling Java apps to zero with Groal VM native image. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Catherine Edelweiss and I'm a developer advocate at Bellsoft. Bellsoft is one of the leading OpenJDK providers and contributors. The company develops and supports Liberica JDK and a number of products aimed at providing the developers with the most complete Java experience. The company has a vast expertise in optimizing Java for the cloud. We provide the smallest containers for the Java applications on the market and also a number of solutions aimed at reducing the Java startup, such as uh, Liberica Native Image Kit and Liberica JDK binaries with the, the support for the coordinated restore checkpoint project. I will explore these concepts in a little while. Also, Bellsoft is a member of a Graal VM Advisory Board, Cloud Native Computing Foundation, the Linux Foundation, and a number of other key committees and boards. It means that we actually know what we are talking about in terms of optimizing the Java performance for the cloud. As I already mentioned, Bellsoft's product range includes Liberica JDK, recommended by Spring, Liberica Native Image Kit, based on the Graal VM Community Edition, and Alpakita Linux, which is 100% compatible with Alpine Linux, but it is the only Linux optimized for Java. All products are open source and free for commercial and personal use, but commercial support is also available. All right, so let's mark out the plan for our webinar today. First, we are going to explore the modern ways of deploying and running applications in the cloud, namely the scale to zero approach. Then we will discuss why the Java application as is, is not quite suitable for this approach and what can we do about that. I will provide a brief overview of the existing solutions to the issue and then we will focus solely on Graal VM native image. We will discuss the key concepts, main features, available distributions. We will also discuss the possible limitations and ways to tackle them. After that, I will provide a hands-on tutorial on converting a Java application into native image. We will also see how we can deploy uh, the native image in a Docker container. Right, so let's uh, move to uh, the first point of our discussion. Traditionally, we used to deploy the application to the server and let it run 24-7 regardless of whether there were any incoming requests. But the cloud changed a lot in the way we deploy and run our applications. It offers tremendous opportunities for scaling the application, allowing us to meet any user demands and traffic spikes. But with great opportunities come great expenses, and the cloud costs money. And if you let your application run idly, without actually doing anything useful, you still have to pay for the cloud resources that were allocated to your application, and for the CPU time. One way of dealing with that is to try to predict the traffic surges, and then request the necessary resources, and the cloud provider will allocate the resources based on your preliminary demand. But in this way, you will probably want to allocate more resources just in case. And then you will still have to pay more for the resources that were allocated. What we want is to achieve a much greater flexibility in scaling our instances in the cloud. And this is where scale to zero comes into play. So scale to zero means the ability to scale the resources to a minimum when there is no traffic. So for instance, if uh, a service is idle, all its instances are stopped. And then if there are any incoming requests, the service is scaled up to meet the demand and then scaled down again. So, this flexibility in scaling the resources means that we pay only for the resources and CPU time when our application is performing some tasks. Using scale to zero approach means better cost efficiency and a more sustainable way of utilizing energy. The magic cloud providers 
such as AWS and Google, already offer uh, tools and solutions that help us to utilize this approach, such as AWS Lambdas or Google Functions. Well, all seems to be well in the Kingdom of Denmark, but there is a slight issue with the Java. You can't simply spin up a Java service. This is because the Java application needs several seconds to start and several minutes or even hours to warm up. Why does it happen? Well, to understand that, we first need to understand how the Java application starts. This process comprises of three stages. The JVM start, the application start, and the JVM warm-up. And the warm-up is the actual culprit of our anguish. So when the JVM starts, all necessary core classes are initialized, system classes are initialized, and the dependencies of uh, the main class get resolved. Then the main method is invoked. The JVM start takes only about several milliseconds on modern hardware, which is, well, not that much, right? But then the application starts. When the application starts, the necessary dependencies get resolved, necessary classes get initialized, and the resources get loaded. The JVM start and application start taken together yield the time to the first operation. And usually that is, well, several seconds, which is already not that optimal, right? We need our instances to start up immediately. But then the JVM has a lot to do before it can process all incoming requests to its fullest. And that is the JVM warm-up. As you know, the Java applications are compiled just in time, so after the application starts. The Java bytecode is translated into machine code. And that is not the only benefit of just-in-time compilation. You see, the uh, JIT compiler optimizes the code after the application starts, and its goal is to provide the highly performant code. So it observes the running application, then gathers some profiling data, and then implements uh, optimizations as it sees fit. And as a rule, the more optimizations, the more performant the resulting code is. Code compilation and optimization take substantially longer than the actual startup. And during the warm-up stage, the application processes way fewer requests than it uh, could process when it is at a stable state. And at the same time, it consumes more memory, because the JVM needs to store somewhere the profiling data and the bytecode cache. So as a result, you have to allocate more memory to your instances. And then this memory is not utilized, but you still have to pay for that. This is called resources under utilization. So what can we do about that? Well, there are actually several solutions to this issue. And migrating to another programming languages is not one of them, so don't worry. The first solution is application class data sharing or AppCDS. It is a JVM feature that uh, loads and initializes system classes and some application classes into the archive during the trial run. And then during the production run, the JVM uh, reads this file and loads the classes from the archive. Loading the classes from the archive is faster than initializing them, so the startup is reduced. And uh, in general, uh, we get a 50% better startup and warm-up, which is already good, but it's not quite what we are looking for. Then, the second solution is the Coordinate Restore at Checkpoint, or the Crack project. It is the OpenJDK project that allows you to pause a running and warmed-up Java application, save it to the file, replicate this file among cloud instances, and then restore the application from the file, from the moment it was paused much like with the video game. And in this case, the application starts in several milliseconds. But the problem is that uh, the crack is not yet uh, well known in the industry, and you may have to rewrite the code of your application so that it uh, could restart from the snapshot safely. Then the next solution is the project laden. 
uh, it is a very cool OpenJDK project, but it is still under development. It uh, uses the power of uh, application class data sharing and ahead of time compilation. But as I already said, it's still uh, in the makings. Early access builds are available, but they are not meant for the production use. And then the fourth alternative is the Graal VM native image. Graal VM native image is an established and well known solution, and it gives us the results that we actually want. And this is exactly what I'm going to discuss right now. So, Graal VM native image is part of the Graal VM project, which is the JDK and the JVM written in Java. But I'm not going to discuss the whole project, we are just going to concentrate on the native image part. So, the Graal VM native image uses ahead of time compilation instead of the just in time compilation. Ahead of time compilation happens before the program execution, so at build time. The Graal VM AOT compiler perform static analysis of the code. During this analysis, it determines which classes, methods and fields are reachable at runtime, and only these methods make it into the final binary. The compiler also uh, initializes uh, some classes, which are safe to initialize. And also, during the build stage, the Java objects allocated by static initializers and objects reachable at runtime are written onto the image heap. After the analysis, the AOT compiler translates the Java bytecode into machine code specific to the operating system and the architecture. So, for instance, if you build the image on Linux x86, you can run it on Linux x86 only. As a result of this process, all necessary classes are initialized and loaded into the image, and uh, also the image contains necessary library classes and statically linked code from the JDK. The resulting native executable is fully compiled and starts in several milliseconds. There is no warm-up, it starts already at peak performance. And this is exactly how we can implement the scale to zero approach with the Java applications. But almost instant startup is not the only benefit of the Graal VM native image. First of all, there is again no warm up, so you don't have to allocate uh, more memory to your instances. And there is no resources under utilization. In addition, uh, you can get potentially a smaller image because it doesn't contain the full library of uh, JVM classes and only those classes required by your application. I say potentially because it depends on your application. And also you get a smaller attack surface and the native image code is harder to reverse engineer. So for instance, let's take a simple uh, echo microservice written in Java. If uh, we containerize it with uh, Debian and the regular JDK, we get a container of about uh, 240 megabytes, which starts uh, in almost two seconds. But if you turn this application into a native image and containerize it with Debian, the size of the image is already 188 megabytes and then starts in only three milliseconds. You can go even further. You can turn the application into a native image and containerize it with the Alpakita Linux. Then the resulting image is three times smaller than the first image that we created. And it also starts uh, in a fraction of a second. There is Oracle Graal VM and Graal VM Community Edition. And there are also two uh, downstream distributions of Graal VM Community Edition, which is Liberica Native Image Kit provided by Bellsoft and Mandrel provided by Red Hat. They all provide the native image functionality, but have some different features. So which of them should you choose for your project? Well, let's take a quick look. They all uh, support uh, the same variety of uh, platforms, so that is uh, Linux, Mac OS and Windows. And the supported architectures are x86 and Arch64. All right, well, uh, the key difference is uh, in uh, available garbage collectors, updated JDK versions and additional functionality. 
So, for instance, Oracle Graal VM, Graal VM Community Edition, and Liberica Native Image Kit provides uh, uh, the uh, native uh, image compiler, the Graal VM JIT compiler, and language installables if you want to use the native image with other programming languages. Liberica Native Image Kit also provides uh, binaries with the Java fix. So, if you develop a desktop application, you might want to turn it into a native image for a faster startup. I will discuss uh, the garbage collectors a little bit further in my talk, but they are different in uh, these distributions. The key factor that you should pay attention to is the updated JDK version. So, Graal VM native image is based on uh, JDK, and different providers uh, release uh, free updates for different versions. So, for instance, Oracle Graal VM provides free updates uh, for uh, native image uh, based on JDK 21 and on the latest JDK version. And as per Oracle policy, you get free updates to the LTS version for three years since its release. And then you have to either migrate to a newer LTS version or acquire a subscription to continue receiving the uh, updates. Graal VM Community Edition provides updates to uh, native image based uh, on the latest JDK version only. And Liberica Native Image Kit and Mandrel uh, provide free updates uh, for uh, native image based on JDK 17, 21 and the latest feature version. And the support lifecycle of these distributions is based on the support roadmap of the corresponding vendor. So imagine you decided to use a Graal VM native image with your project. How can you unleash the full potential of your Graal VM native image distribution? Well, first of all, choose a Graal VM native image for your GDK version be it 17 or 21. Secondly, just like with the regular Java runtime, you should select an appropriate garbage collector uh, best suited for your application. Thirdly, you can use build paths to facilitate the process of building the image. And also, you can use GitHub Actions to integrate them into your CI-CD pipeline. All major frameworks such as Spring, Micronaut, Quarkus, Heladon already provide uh, integrated support for Graal VM native image, so you don't have uh, to deal with any complex uh, configuration. In the beginning, I mentioned that there are certain considerations when using Graal VM native image. What are they? Well, first of all, uh, building a native image is a very uh, resource demanding process. You have to allocate several gigabytes of memory to that. 10 or a uh, dozen or, well, it depends actually. Uh, but uh, if uh, there are not uh, enough resources, the image can't be built. Well, I wouldn't consider it a limitation actually, because it is necessary only for uh, the build time. After that, uh, the native image consumes the regular amount of memory. The second consideration is that it takes several minutes to build a native image. So, yes, it is a lengthy process. But again, I don't see it as a limitation, because you only have to wait once. And then you deploy the native image to the cloud, to your instances, and they all start almost instantly, all the time, and you enjoy the perks of almost instant startup, which is just great, I think. So once, it is possible to wait. It's better than waiting every time your services uh, warm up. In addition, there is a limited uh, choice of garbage collectors. So uh, there is a serial GC, which is the simplest garbage collector that works in one thread and freezes all application threads during the collection. And there is also Epsilon the GC that doesn't collect any garbage and only allocates memory. All Graal VM uh, distributions include these two collectors, and there are also additional collectors in uh, two Graal VM distributions. Oracle Graal VM includes a G1 GC, and Liberica Native Image Kit includes Parallel GC. So, if uh, increasing the performance of your application is critical to you, then you should opt uh, for 
a distribution that provides a necessary garbage collector for you. And the last consideration, the most substantial one, is that uh, Grow VM native image is not the best friend of uh, Java dynamic features such as reflection, dynamic proxy, and so on. So it means that if it doesn't detect the usage of uh, the dynamic features at build time, the application might demonstrate unexpected behavior at runtime. So the image might be built without errors, but uh, well, unpleasant surprises wait for you during the production run. Can we do anything about that? Well, actually, yes. Uh, all you have to do is provide necessary metadata to the Graal VM native image compiler. And there are several ways of doing that. So you can provide metadata manually, but uh, considering the fact that uh, uh, there might be a lot of usages of dynamic features uh, in your application, it's not very practical. You can use Graal VM tracing agent. During the trial run, it observes the application and identifies uh, all the uh, uh, usages of the dynamic features, and then creates uh, the JSON files with the necessary information. But if you use the tracing agent, you should uh, run the application through uh, the multiple execution paths, as many as possible, because the tracing agent detects only those uh, resources uh, and features that were used actually by the application. You can also use the Gradle Resources Auto Detection plugin and uh, provide uh, the uh, information about the metadata there. And there is the Graal VM Reachability Metadata Repository. It is a centralized place for storing the JSON files for the libraries that uh, don't provide the metadata yet. So you can look there for the library that you need. All right, we are done with theory. It's time for some coding. All right, as I promised, we are going to convert a Java application into a native image, and then we are going to see how we can containerize a native image into a Docker container, and we're going to see the difference in startup between the regular Java application and the native image. Okay, I have uh, a simplest possible Java application here. Demo Java. It has only one class. Let's look at it. So only one class demo, and only one method main. And this application does nothing more but tell us hello from native image from the console. Uh, we are going to turn this application into a native image. That's pretty easy. I'm going to show you how to do that. But first, you need to, to download uh, a library native image kit. You can download it from uh, the Balasoft's website uh, and to choose the necessary uh, version of uh, native image kit for the required JDK version. So we have here native image kit 23 and 24 for JDK 17, 21, and 22. And there are several packages for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. And the packages are core, standard, and full. And the difference between them is that the core package uh, uh, contains uh, Liberic VM and uh, the native uh, image compiler. Uh, the standard version contains uh, all of that plus uh, uh, language uh, installables. And the full version contains uh, Liberic FX, which is based on OpenJFX. That is, if you develop uh, desktop applications. I already uh, downloaded library native image kit, and what we're going to do is uh, turn it into a native image. But first, we uh, need to use JavaC to generate our bytecode. Uh, you can use uh, the standard JVM for that. Okay. And the next step is. Uh, to use the native image tool inside the library native image kit. And we are going to feed it uh, the resulting file, uh, demo.class, but we don't have to specify the extension here. And it's going to generate a native image for us.
Okay, our native image is ready. As you can see here, it is the executable. And we can run it directly from the console by specifying its name. And here it is, our message, hello from native image. Or you can also double click it and, and uh, launch it as any regular application. Here you can see this message too. Well, this simple application won't actually show us uh, much difference in terms of the startup. But we can see uh, the difference in terms of uh, the resulting container size. This simplest possible application doesn't need to use many JVM classes, as you may guess, so the image should be smaller. Let's try to containerize it. For that purpose, we need a Docker file. In this Docker file, we are going to um, use Liberica Native Image Kit container, which is based on Liberica Native Image Kit 23 for JDK 21 and Alpakita Linux Muscle. And we are going to perform the same actions we did in the consoles. So we're going to create a demo.class and then we are going to generate a native image based on this uh, file. And uh, the next step is we are taking Alpakita Linux base. We don't need any JDK here only the Linux distribution, and we simply transfer the resulting native executable into this fresh image and run it. Okay, let's try doing that. Okay, our image is ready. Let's check it. So as you can see, it takes only uh, 19 megabytes, which is, well, pretty impressive for a Java application. Well, that was a simple Java app. Let's move on to something that is closer to what you actually run in production. And we are going to take the Spring Pet Cleaning application. Spring Pet Cleaning is uh, the reference Spring Boot application. It is a simple uh, web application, but uh, it uh, performs uh, well, all the essential functions and helps you to search for things and uh, change uh, something in uh, the database. Uh, you can get it on GitHub. So here it is. And you don't uh, have to change anything here. We only need a Docker file. So we are going to containerize it. And we are going to do that in two ways. First, we are going to create uh, a standard uh, Docker container with a standard Java application. For that purpose, we will uh, use Liberica runtime container based on JDK 21 and Opakit Muscle. We will uh, build our application the usual way, and we are skipping the tests uh, just uh, to accelerate the build. And then we are going to transfer this uh, uh, application into uh, Liberica runtime container with JRE because we don't need JDK to run the application, only the JRE. And uh, we're going to run it, as simple as that. Okay, let's try doing that.
our container in which is ready. Let's check it. All right, so as you remember, we gave it the name backlink standard, and here it is. It takes uh, 200 megabytes. And let's try to run it. As you can see, our application started uh, in almost six seconds. So here it is. Let's refresh it. Yes. So it's working. All right. And that was a standard app. Let's see what we can do with the native image. You don't have to change anything in uh, the application and we need the docker file Spring Boot uh, 3 uh, already supports crawl vm native image right so here we take library native image kit container based on library native image kit 23 and jdk 21 and I'll pack it to muscle and uh, instead of building the application the usual way we are giving our native image this command pnative native compiler so it means that we're telling our build system maven that we want to generate a native image and then here we can see uh, the difference is that we don't uh, use the jre we only need uh, linux so we're using a to linux base and so uh, we are copying the resulting native image into the fresh image and uh, simply run it Okay, let's try doing that. Our image is ready. Let's check it. So here it is. Bad clinic native image. As you can see, it takes 204 megabytes. So it has uh, basically the same size as uh, the container with the standard application. And that is actually okay because uh, uh, Spring Patch Clinic is uh, the reference application that uses a lot of uh, JVM classes. And so in this case, the image is uh, not smaller. But let's see how fast it starts. Right, and the difference is striking. So our application started in only half a second. And yes, it is working. Everything is fine. Nothing is broken. So that's a success. So in this case, we didn't uh, win much in, in terms of uh, the image size, but the startup is uh, really fast, much faster than with the standard application. That was approach using a standard uh, Docker file technique. So we are writing a Docker file, and then we are feeding it to our project. And then uh, there is uh, also a way that uses build packs. 
If you use build packs, you don't have to write any Docker files. Once you build command, you already get your image. And uh, the uh, official uh, build pack for Spring uses the library for native uh, image kit as a native uh, image compiler. And uh, Liberica JDK as a standard JDK uh, distribution. But it also uses Debian as uh, the base Linux image. And we want to uh, reduce the image size. So uh, I suggest we try out Alpakita build packs. Alpakita build packs use uh, Liberica JDK and uh, Alpakita Linux. And uh, you only uh, need to change the configuration of uh, the plugin on, uh, only slightly. So as the Spring Path Clinic, it can be a Gradle project and a Maven project, but we are going to use it as a Maven project. And we are going to add the configuration to the Maven plugin. And we're going to specify the build pack that we want to use. And the most important part is to specify the builder. Right, so in this case, we specify that we want to use a build pack, but we want to use a different build pack. And that is the Balthard's build pack, based on muscle. Um, the build pack uh, with the uh, Glipsy is also available. To use build packs, you need the uh, Java distribution. You can download Liberica JDK for this purpose. Again, the builds are available for a wide variety of platforms and operating systems. Okay, so we're pointing a Java Home variable to our JDK that we downloaded. Then we're using Maven. Again, we're skipping tests and check style just to accelerate the build. And the most important thing here is that first we are telling Maven that we want to use a build pack to build the Docker image. And here we're telling it that we want to use an, to build a native image inside our Docker container. So let's do that. All right, which is ready. And this was published in the Docker Container Registry. And we can run it. Again, the application started in half a second, which is just great. And yes, it is working. All right? Well, congratulations. We just built three native images and as you can see it's actually pretty straightforward so spring boot if you use spring boot it uh, supports an image out of the box so you actually don't have to do anything you don't have to write a docker file or specify a command for generating a native image if you're using build packs and that's it to sum up the scale to zero approach enables us to scale instances up and down to a minimum, depending on the incoming traffic, and so it is cost efficient and sustainable. Java services take longer to reach peak performance, as they need several seconds to start and several minutes to warm up, so we can't easily scale them up and down. Native Image compiles and optimizes Java code at build time. 
so applications start almost instantly and at peak performance, and there is no memory overhead. There are several distributions of Graal VM native image, so choose one based on your needs. Key factors are the updated JDK version, available garbage collectors, enterprise support, and additional functionality. The process of generating a native image is not complicated, but the biggest challenge is to befriend native image with all cases of dynamism in your application. The goal is to provide a complete set of metadata using tracing agent or other means. All right, that was it. Thank you for your attention. I hope you liked the webinar. If you have any questions, you can contact me on Twitter and you can also browse our blog. There are lots of articles, guides on using Graal VM native image on other ways of improving the performance of your Java applications and so on and so forth. So it's fun. You can also subscribe to the newsletter if you want to. Well, thank you very much and hopefully until next time.